Welcome in to Beyond the Arc with Coach W, Dan Lang, Coach W. Good to see you. Um, nice to see you. Happy New Year. Same as with, same to you. <laughs> Coming off the win over Army, nice yeah. win. Um, you guys scored 73 points and were able to do so after coming off a 44-point <laughs> yeah. performance uh, back in the home gym. Had 11 yeah. different players score. Mm -hmm. Overall, pretty good win for you guys. It felt great. It was a, a great team win. And like you said, after scoring 44 <laughs> points, you just don't know. Um, it's been an inconsistent year offensively and defensively. And so, you know, just to be able to correct some of the mistakes that we had in the BU game and take it into Army was nice to see. It's just the, how long can we do that for and not take steps backwards. Um, but it was great to see people score. Tharai came in. I haven't gotten her in all year. And just for her to come in and be able to score a basket real fast, I uh, just got the bench, I think, hyped and everything. So that was kind of fun to see. And when you talk about that, just what goes into, you know, getting her some minutes? Because those were her first minutes of her college career. Yeah. And she comes in and is able to get a bucket and get I, on the tally sheet. Yeah, I think it's just her feeling confident about herself um, and doing things correctly in practice. And she scores in, in practice. So <laughs> I'm not at all surprised that she put the ball in. Mm -hmm. um, I think Fish set her up really nicely yeah. with the dump pass. And, uh, yeah, it's just good. And, and I think she was hyped. Like, she was like, I don't, I, think, I don't even think she matched up in transition defense after that made basket. I'm, like, <laughs> screaming at her to find someone um, but you know just I, I love when the team gets psyched for each other and um, like you said a great team win hopefully we can carry that into Saturday and that says a lot about the chemistry on the team yes when everyone's excited when someone else does yes. really well yes I mean, and not just kind of like a golf clap like yeah you know, right, right. A, no, they're excited. there are some pretty cool pictures sure. of the, the players jumping and yeah. then they know how much time she yeah. puts in right and she's here she's a, she's a walk-on she loves it um, and when you love basketball and, you, and your teammates are excited for you, why, how can you not be excited for yourself? Um, so, and Therai is a, is a comedian on, off the floor, so we just love having her, and she's, she's a good person. Now, 11 different players were able to score in the game yep. for you guys. What does that say about spreading the wealth? Well, we want to do that. That's what we want. We don't want it to be just one person scoring. We want to balance. Um, I think you're harder to guard uh, as we go down the road here in the conference if you can have multiple people step in and score for you. So that's exciting for me to see. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about the consistency of doing it. We can't have it this game and then the next game it's two people. Right, and that's been our struggle. And I think the more confidence we have, it's the sophomore class that's getting a major amount of minutes this year. And the more consistent they can be shooting the ball, the more minutes that they get, the more comfortable they feel. And I've heard them say that, you know, the more minutes I get, even the freshmen that are getting time with uh, Lauren Stack and, um, and Carla um, are feeling better about it. I mean, Carla goes in and seems to score right away every time. So we got to get her more minutes. Um, but just She scored on her birthday. She did. I was happy for her for that. I think she had four points. And she's not afraid. She's mm -hmm. super confident. And so I'm trying to give them more confidence by giving them minutes. And this is one of the strange years for me in that I'm playing everybody, right? And that's a good thing and a bad thing in some ways. Um, but I really, I think it's exciting for our future. I'm excited for the second half of the season because everybody's getting time and hopefully um, gain the confidence that we're talking about and just the experience that we need. You mentioned the fact that you guys were able to fix some of the problems from yes, the BU game for sure. to the Army West Point mm -hmm. game. What were some of those big keys that uh, you guys were able to switch around? Um, help side, just being in help side consistently. And I think what Army ran helped us a yeah. little bit because there's less action on the weak side. Uh, but still, uh, just being there for the majority. I think we took five or six charges during the course of the game. That's what we. That's how we play defense, and we just hadn't been doing that. Um, and just really being able to sit in stances um, and stay down when your man has the ball and. Army likes to penetrate a lot and shoot the three, so we had to be able to lock our individual person down and not allow threes as much. And I think for the most part we did that, uh, but we still have areas that we struggle with. And you know, letting people drive middle on us too much is a problem. And boxing out rebounding wise, I don't think we we necessarily defensive rebounded as well as we would have liked. Um, we know we're last in the country in offensive rebounding, so <laughs> that's a whole other story there in and of itself. We won't harp on that. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, but just being able to box out on the defensive end wasn't necessarily there, and Army's super physical anyway, so we just have to get a little bit better at those things. Overall, when you look at Army, they were, they were coming off a 93-point performance I know. against Colgate. Yeah. So you're... We harped on the three-point <laughs> line. We harped a lot on getting out on shooters. Putting the, making them put the ball on the floor baseline so we can have our, mm -hmm. our defensive rotations. And for the most part, they were there. 
so the scouting report worked and it was executed. So. Yes, yes, it felt, made me feel much better uh, after the BU game, so yeah. Uh, Laura Greytalk, you speak about the uh, BU mm -hmm. game. She played really well she in did. that game, had 12 points, earned herself yeah. a start in mm -hmm. the uh, game against Army and played pretty well in that game as well. She did. It's just, I'm trying to find that fifth starter and some of it has to do with who's playing well and some of it has to do with matchups. Mm -hmm. And so because Laura played really hard in the BU game, I felt like she would help the starters with that energy piece that we need. Um, and I thought she played well yesterday. You know, she took shots that were, were available to her. Um, she played hard on the defensive end. You know, but it's just part of the process for us to figure out who should be in that, that starting role. But it's kind of nice that I can uh, mm -hmm. rotate it a little bit, right? So based on matchups and stuff, that people are ready to go when you call their number. Katie Moreni, nice bounce back game for mm, her. She yes. had 19 points, nine rebounds, almost got that double double. Yeah, close. She, she was close. <laughs> um, talk about what you saw from her in the game against um, uh, Army. I, I, she played great defensively. I think for her, I think she was two for four from the three point line, so she didn't just rely on the three, mm. which was nice to see. But she got some layups, she got some and ones, she got to the line. She just scored a, a variety of ways, and that's who Katie is. I think people label her as a three point shooter, but she's not just that. She's capable of doing so much more. She used to be a point guard, right? So she mm. knows how to handle the ball, she can go either way. Um, I just really liked how she kind of attacked Army um, and, got, and got into the paint and, and scored. And really took sort of that leadership. I mean, she is the yeah, captain, but really I mean, took that. Hands down, she's our leader. Mm -hmm. So um, for her to just remain consistent mentally, I think, is, is not get rattled there. Um, and she showed up at both ends. And when she's there and she's vocal and she's kind of gathering the troops and telling them what to do <laughs> and kind of complimenting them when they're playing well helps everybody else. And I think everyone listens to her when she speaks. So makes me feel good when she has a good game. Emily Fisher, it also seemed like, had a, a oh, pretty good game yeah. for you guys, and, and that was nice to see her yeah. getting back in the rhythm. I needed her to get back in the rhythm, <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's tough. She was away for two mm -hmm. weeks back home in Australia, and she hadn't played in three and a half weeks mm -hmm. when she came back, and I just think she was in a different time zone. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> do, like literally. It, it takes a while to recover from that. So. I do think she, she focused on the defensive end, and that's what Emily brings is transition and defense, and she brought that as soon as I subbed her in. Uh, and that's why I gave her a lot more minutes because she was playing the way she's capable of playing and really happy for her, and she got some points and things like that, which kind of sparks her a little bit, but hopefully she's back. Mm -hmm. You talk about um, getting in the rhythm, and yeah. you guys had a little bit of time off before mm -hmm. starting Patriot League play mm -hmm. against Colgate yeah. and did come away with the home win. But um, what did you see from the team there as far as kind being after ready After the roll? break? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just think it's hard because you're trying to get yourself back into the, the rhythm that we had when we, when we left uh, against UW. And it wasn't there right away. And I think you, now you're bringing Fish back into the picture who was mm -hmm. out. And it's like this whole non-conference, we've had somebody sitting out at some point during the season and it's hard to get a flow. Um, so I think... I think this team in particular just plays better at home. That's what you see typically from teams that have a lot of youth and have, you know, we're playing a lot of freshmen and, and sophomores and we have what, two seniors and one junior playing right now. So they play better at home, they're more comfortable at home, they shoot the ball better at home. It's when we go on the road that we have to figure out how to grit things out and we're just not there yet. And that's gonna be a process because we have the three top teams <laughs> in the league, one at home and two on the road. So they, have, they better figure it out quick or it's gonna be a long road ahead of us. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's a tough stretch you guys have coming up. The yeah. next game is the home game on Saturday yep. against Lehigh and yep. then uh, hitting the road for a couple games, one against uh, Bucknell, another against Holy Cross. Yeah, that's a brutal <laughs> schedule right there. Um, but you know what, I like it. I like it. They have have to remain focused for the next three games and be able to execute what we're doing. We're going to have to change some things based on the opponent. Our, our starting lineup, like I said, was probably going to change. So, yeah, it's a lot. Um, and I know they'll be pumped for Lehigh. I mean, obviously it's Lehigh. It's Alumni Day. It's National Girls and Women's in Sports Day. So hopefully the stands will be packed a little bit. And, you know, just playing in front of people is always exciting. And then the fact that Cecily's on the, on the other <laughs> staff, I'm sure, helps them a little bit as well. But you also have to think that they might know a little bit more about what we do because Cecily's on their staff. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to change some things. National Girls and Women's in Sports Day, what does that mean for you and you know you said you hope there's a bunch of people in the yeah. crowd but what does that mean i just you? love having the, the kids here right yeah. and it's a clinic afterwards and it gets our kids involved with the kids in the stands and just teaching them and showing them how to shoot how to pass all the basics and fundamentals but it's all the sports mm -hmm. uh combined out there teaching and i just i love having it i think just 
it's the next generation, right? So you wanna you wanna um, be the best role models you can be for the next generation. And I think our our team are, are great young ladies, um, and it's just fun to see them interact and, and enjoy having kids around. Well, the game gets going at one o'clock at Bender Arena as the Eagles take on the Lehigh Mountain Hawks. That'll do it for this edition of Beyond the Arc. For Coach, I'm Dan. We'll see you next time.